welcome to What's the Big Book Actually Saying for Step 6 and 7. Step 6 and 7, you say? A couple of reasons for that. Number one, they do work very much as a combo deal when you actualize them. The word remove appears in both of them, so they're connected by that word. And equally, they, they really only get a couple of sentences each in the big book. So they really read together. Not as much as steps eight and nine do. And in fact, when you when we get to steps eight and nine, you'll notice that they're introduced together in italics and they're the only two steps that are. So really, we're asked to read steps eight and nine as a combo deal quite formally here. I'm just suggesting that we can study them better together than apart. Let's have a look at how we arrive at step six. And I'm going to seek off the back of step five into step six, because that's the way, if you read step six here from page 59, we're entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character. What do you mean all these defects of character? If you read that cold, you wouldn't know where these defects of, of all of them. What do you mean all of them? Well, have a read of steps four and five. And then the, the context is provided for how we are supposed to read step six. Then step seven, asked him, her, them to remove our shortcomings. So, you know, whether we're using the word shortcomings or flaws or defects of character, it doesn't really matter what word we use. It all means the same thing. Stuff we want to dump because it's not working for us and others, blocking us from God, and that means we're probably going to drink and die. So let's look at how we arrive at step six. And it begins at the end of step five. Returning home, we find a place where we can be quiet for an hour, carefully reviewing what we have done. We think we thank God from the bottom of our heart that we know him or her, them better. See, this is interesting. You know, at step three, we begin our journey of wishing willingly to find God, to build a relationship with God, a better understanding. Well, because we've done a whole lot of work, steps four and five, we will know him, her, them better. That's the whole point of the step five promises, which happened just before this paragraph. You know, we're, we're told that we're going to feel a different way about ourselves. We're going to see and hear God a little bit clearer, and we're certainly not going to feel like a drink. So, you know, we, we should, we're thankful for that. I was. I don't know. I didn't, I didn't need to tell myself to be thankful. I was thankful. And by the way, it took me about three to four weeks to do step six because I took this, this suggestion really uh, really seriously. So my hour turned into many hours, and that was just me. My sponsor said that was okay. I tend to agree. Anyway, taking this book down from our shelf, um, I'd be surprised if Mine was ever on a shelf while I was using it to do the initial step work. But anyway, we turn to the page which contains the 12 steps, page 59. Carefully reading the first five proposals, not just steps four and five, the work we've just done, but the first five proposals, we ask if we have omitted anything, for we are building an arch through which we shall walk a free man, woman, person at last. So this idea, I'm walking through an arch, and the way I always saw it was, that door will remain forever open. It's not a doorway. It's an arch, and an arch doesn't have a door, which means I'm free to go back to my old life anytime I want. So it, it's this idea of willingness, which Step 6 talks a lot about. I'm moving, this, I'm moving in the direction towards God through this arch, but I can always go back. That's a very strong thing. So the only thing that's keeping me moving forward is have I done the first five steps completely. Have I truly accepted I'm an alcoholic, that I have an allergy to alcohol and a mind that can forget that I've got an allergy to alcohol and tell me I can have one or two and then stop, giving me an unmanageable life? Hey, was my life unmanageable enough or do I need more evidence? Do I need more unmanageability to show me just how alcoholic I am? Have I really taken step one? Have I really believed at step two that Jung was right, that Silkworth was right, the early founders of AA were right, that, that God is the only shot I've got of giving myself a new way of moving and thinking and feeling and perceiving through life such that I'll never have the thought of a drink again? Am I all in on that? And then... Step three, am I all in on the all in step? <laughs> you know, am I prepared to not just accept philosophically 
that God is the answer to the alcoholic's issue? Am I prepared to get off my backside and start working? And let's have a look at the work I've done already, the actions I've taken uh, at step four or five. Have I been full on? It continues, is our work solid so far? Are stones properly in place? You know, in other words, we're building the arts through which we can walk through and can always return to and walk back again through the other way or stay on the other side of. Have we skimped on the cement put into the foundation? Have we tried to make uh, mortar without sand? Is it a crumbly arch? Is it going to like fall apart? Or is it going to stay together? If we can answer to our satisfaction, then we look at step six. Okay, so, you know... Did I inventory everything I needed to? Did I share and disclose everything I needed to at step four or five? Have I done the work? And only we, the alcoholic doing this work, can answer that. Our sponsor can't answer that for us. A thousand meetings in a month can't answer that for us. We just need to go to a quiet place. Quiet is the key. Slow down. Bit of serenity. Bit of reflection. It's me. It's the book. And it's the truth. You know, when you look at the 12 and 12 at the start of the step six chapter, it talks about this is the one that separates the men from the boys. And uh, I'm crossing my fingers. One day it might read this was the one that separates the adults from the children. So we can be a little bit more inclusive with that language. But it is because this is the second time we took it at step three, now at step six, are you all in for a brand new way of thinking, feeling, perceiving, living? Because this is what step six says. It's a huge, massive, mountainous proposition, but it's so singular. This is why we don't need a lot of sentences. But do not be mistaken that the smallness of the word count has anything to do with the smallness of the significance of step six. Step six is, for many of us, the real turning point. It's the, and I'll explain why in a moment. Let's read it. We have emphasised willingness, there's that word again, oh, willingness, as being indispensable. In other words, willingness is the essential tool and we've we've talked about willingness at each one of the steps so far are we ready to let god remove from us all the things we have admitted are objectionable so let's go back to step three for a moment we've tried human willpower i'm going to try and be a nice guy i'm going to try and not do this anymore i know why i drink i'm going to try and remove those triggers i'm not going to pick up a drink none of it worked we need a higher power to help us uh, not drink. We need a higher power to help us live a life where not drinking is possible. Are we ready to actually do that now? Because we've done all the work, we've done all the prep work. It's almost like um, I, I, I'm, I'm redoing my kitchen and I've pulled the old tiles off and I've got the sugar soap out and I've removed all the excess glue and I've wiped down the walls, I've taped everything up, I've mixed up the mortar, I've got the tiles there, I've cut all the tiles to size, but am I now ready to actually lay them? Which is the scary bit. I laid some tiles yesterday in my spare bathroom, the, the, the ensuite bathroom, and uh, it's a scary thing to start actually gluing the tiles to the wall. Uh, and the prep is easy. But boy, oh boy, once you start laying those tiles, there's no going back. That's the same feeling that you, I had at step six. and Maybe you had too. Or you will have if you haven't done it yet. We ask God to help us be willing if we're still holding on to something. So, and this is a really, oh my God, it's, it's so important. You know, just imagine, for example, that one of these shortcomings that came up at step four and five, perhaps it's your desire for you know, financial success or greed and you've got a nice Mercedes parked in the driveway. And by the way, AA is not about selling the Mercedes, <laughs> but it's probably more about asking, do you need a Maserati as well? And what choices would get you that Maserati? Probably some self-centered ones, but are you, 
Are you okay at just being comfortable with the Mercedes you've already got while you spend your time doing things for others instead of self? And it's like, oh, you know what? I've always, you know, I, I, oh, I don't know if I really want to be less self-centered around money. Well, then pray for some willingness because that's one of your nominated shortcomings or flaws. You need to let that go. You need to be all in on the new life. That's what we're talking about here because step four doesn't require us to change. It requires us to work. We reviewed and recorded our shortcomings. Okay, great. No changes yet. You're doing and saying and perceiving of things can be just as it was. Then we step five, we start to change emotionally. Via, and, and if you want to understand what those emotional changes feel like, read the step five promises, which we focused on in the last video. They're in the big book. Admitted these to God, ourselves, and another person. So when we admit shortcomings, we change emotionally. You know, the step five promises talk about being free of feeling like a drink, feeling closer to God. But it's feelings, right? Our doing and saying is not being changed yet necessarily. Step six, ready to ask God to remove them so as to live a different way. Am I ready for actual change? Am I willing to let my doing and saying and perceiving and thinking be modified? Am I literally going to be putting myself at a family Christmas in a few months' time with all the same people and problems and situations as last Christmas when I got drunk and run amok? Am I prepared to treat Auntie Mary and Uncle Bob differently when they tell the same boring stories? Do you know, <laughs> am I prepared to not let the way my parents raise me be the driving factor for everything I do and say in front of them next Christmas as I did last Christmas? Am I all in. In other words, am I still all in on the path of turning my will and my life over to the care of God as I understand him or her or them? Mm. This is the hugest step for many of us. And we miss it because it's expressed so succinctly. But like most gravely huge, massive, uh, almost insurmountable feeling things, they're often incredibly simple. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a tsunami. It's a lot of bad weather coming my way. That's all I need to know. But boy, oh boy, it's going to change my life when it gets here. Okay. Positive tsunami in this case. So let's look at step seven. Oh, <laughs> after all that build up. Um, hope I haven't scared you off. Step seven. When ready. Okay, which we now are by actually taking step seven. We say something like this. This is from the next paragraph from the one I just read. We say something like this. So let's just, oh, hang on. Let's just stop this. It is not telling us to recite this, okay, like a parrot. It's something like this. My suggestion is if you don't like the way this prayer reads, change it. We're allowed to because it says we say something like this. Okay, so we, we can't go, I'm uncomfortable with the language. Well, if you're uncomfortable with the language, change it. This is your journey. This is you talking to God as you understand him, her, them, it. Okay? So it's a really important thing to, and I don't believe that's willful, by the way. I think that's just personal. And there's a difference between personal and willful. My creator I am now willing that you should have all of me, good and bad. I pray that you now remove from me every single defect of character or flaw, shortcoming, fault, unhelpful trait, <laughs> which stands in the way of my usefulness to you and my fellows. Grant me strength as I go out from here to do your bidding. Amen. Now, just very quickly, this is the first, well, sorry, this is not the first prayer we say. This is the first amen prayer we say. So it's like, and amen, in other words, laboring the point, this is a prayer. I checked out what amen means this morning. It means so be it. I find saying so be it might be better for me moving forward. This is the, the insight I developed today. If I'm uncomfortable saying amen because it brings up sort of, I don't know, some childhood Christian baggage, whatever, so be it. You know, it's, that's cool. 
That's the sort of thing that people say in in Star Wars movies. So be it. <laughs> I, I really like that. Anyway, we have then completed step seven. And that prayer is you talking to God, saying, I'm all in. Now, what's interesting is the structure of this prayer is so similar to the step three prayer. And I believe if we read, I'm just going to give you a moment or two to look at the two prayers and, and, and ask yourself to, as we often say in AA, look for the similarities, not the differences. Or in this case, look for the similarities that actually unpack the difference between where we are in our spiritual development at step three and step seven. These two prayers pretty much are asking the same thing, but in a different way. They are structured very similarly, but they reflect two different stages in one's spiritual growth towards developing a relationship with the power of your understanding. And it's the of my understanding that actually reflects the changes. Let's look at a few. If you look at the first sentence or starting part of these players, step three, God, I offer myself to thee to build with me and do with me as thou wilt versus my creator, I'm now willing that you should have all of me good and bad. Step three reads very much as a statement of willingness alone. Like, you know, here's me to build, uh, do, do whatever you want. <laughs> it's like saying, saying to a three-year-old kid, here's a bunch of Lego, go build something with it. Um, it, it it's very general. It's just a, a general statement of willingness. Step seven includes what we have learned across steps four to six, okay, um, the good and the bad. It cannot be expressed without knowledge of what the bad bits are. Now, we don't focus a lot in AA on the, the good bits that are left over when we look at these aspects of our life at steps four and five, but I found there were lots of them. What amazed me, just very quickly on, on step five especially was, actually it was step four, I worked at this school at that time and there were three people on my list of resentments and harms as a result. But what about this person? How come I didn't harm them? And why aren't they on my resentments? I actually had a chat to a couple of people at step four. I said to them, Have I, did, I, did I harm you in any way? Because I seem to be harming everybody else at this time. <laughs> do, do, do you make the cut as well? And it was interesting to hear back, no, no, you were okay. And I had to think about, well, what does that say about me at a time where I could just see myself as being awful, demonic, why was it this person had no problem with me? Very important information for me. By the way, that's nothing to do with step four. It's just something I did as well as step four at that time. But it, it seemed to fuel my spiritual growth anyway. Uh, you can't, you know, my creator, I am willing that you should have all of me good and bad. It's more specific. It suggests we're further along the path. Let me read again. R relieve me, it says at step three, of the bondage of self, that I may better do thy will, take away my difficulties. As opposed to, I pray that you now remove from me every single defect of character, flaw, shortcoming, fault, unhelpful trait, which stands in the way of my usefulness to you and my fellows. Do you, do you get a sense of the growth, the God as you understand, maybe spiritual path as you understand it, development across Three, two, seven. Step three expresses our issues in general terms. Bondage of self, difficulties, knowing that we have not reflected upon what our difficulties specifically are. But step seven assumes we have reflected deeply on all our shortcomings because it invites us to ask God to remove every single one of them. Fascinating. Also, better doing thy will, step three, is extremely general. It's like when I'm, you know, overweight and out of shape, I could go to the gym to get fit. <laughs> but, but, but how am I going to get fit? I have no idea. I'm not at the gym yet. This phrase doesn't go into how we can do it. Removing defects of character that stand in the way of being useful to God and others unpacks in a more specific way our program for a living. 
In other words, if I don't act on my flaws, I will be more spiritual. So now I know all this new information. I know, my, I, I know every single defect of character, flaws, shortcomings that I have. And I understand that they stand in the way of my usefulness to you and my fellows. Okay, this is starting to feel like a real system I'm about to do in five minutes' time. Development. Look at the last bits. The victory over them, it says at step three, may bear witness to those I would help of thy power, thy love, and thy way of life. May I do thy will always. Now, number one, the idea of the victory over difficulties bearing witness to those, I will, that is really confusing language for most of us these days. Okay, we don't bear, we don't use that term bear witness. Um, we're more likely to use the term bear grills. So what what we're talking about here is that if I behave in a certain way, you I am bearing witness. In other words, you can witness God working through me. It's complex language. It needs to be fully understood, I feel. But when we get to step seven, it reads way more pragmatically. So as I've written in the middle, step three reads very, I don't quite know how to do this yet. It's saying in a general way that when we help others, free of our difficulties, flaws, shortcomings, etc., that they will see or witness God's power, love, way of life, etc. So God moves through me. What God wants me to do drives, and we'll get to this at step 10, proper use of the will. Step 11 as well. Step seven reads that we are now ready to go out from here and carry out God's bidding, God's requests. It's, it's, it's this, I love that phrase, to go out from here. You know, that, that phrase at the end of step three, may I do thy will always, it's so, I don't know, nebulous. Here it's, I am about, I, I need some strength, God, because right now I am going to go out from here to do your bidding. So be it. It is so current in a way that step three isn't. Step three is general and nebulous because that's all it can be. We haven't got off our backsides yet and done any work. Boy, oh boy, step seven is so immediate. Right now, I need strength. Not tomorrow, not a month from now. Right now, I need strength. Please give me some because I've got to go out there, maybe for the first time ever, and do what you want me to do. Mm, and that's the system that we start to live. We call it a program. I start to think from here I no longer saw AA as a program, the 12 steps as a program. It's now the way of life. You know, once we're done with step eight and nine, the next three steps, 10, 11, 12, they are the way of life steps. They're not, they're not steps we do once. Um, I mean, God, step 11 we're probably already doing by now. We're, we're praying. We're praying for stuff already on a daily basis <laughs> well, here on this day we are give me some strength got to go out from here start doing what you want me to do it's like i've got the job what's my first task it's this sort of thing so be it and on that rather i don't know challenging yet i hope positive note have a happy sober day see you for steps eight and nine the next combo deal